Good day grade 10s. Welcome to our next lesson on Euclidean geometry. So we've learned about the lines and angles. Now today we're going to talk about specifically parallel and transversal lines. So we have this little phrase, maths is fun. Now I'm sure you've been taught this in grade 8 and grade 9, so this is just revision, but still I'm going to teach it to you. And when I was young, for some reason my teacher taught me maths is fuzz, which actually is doesn't make sense at all, but maths is fun. Even if you disagree, it still can be understood. And what it is teaching you about is three shapes that we can look for, and it gives you the relationship between the angles with the parallel lines. So let us start off with the F. The F represents angles when you've got two parallel lines. The two angles that are on the crooks of the transversal lines of your F are equal to each other and if they make the shape they are called corresponding angles corresponding angles corresponding angles so if we look at our example here we can see that we can see that we can draw if we've got our two parallel lines of course this only works with parallel lines we've got two parallel lines we can see that we can find some nice corresponding angles because angle 4 is going to equal angle 8. Why? Because they're corresponding. Then if I had to draw, let's just do a different color, I could draw an F upside down. So I could look at it like that. And that would be an upside down F. Now obviously on the screen we can't take the page over or around. But obviously with you guys, when you're looking for this, you can turn your page around and you can look for F's or backward F's. And you can see therefore that angle 1 equals angle 5. Okay, let's get another color going. Let's see if we can find some other F's. You can also see it. oh yes, here we go. This here is a backward F where angle 7 is going to equal angle 3. Why? Because it's forming that backward F and you've got within the crook of the transversal, I mean of your parallel lines, you have got the 3 and the 7. And then finally, if we look at one more, let's do the purple, you can see we've got also got an upside down F over here. And that means that 2 and 6 are equal. So what have we said? We've said that angle 2 equals angle 6. We have said that angle 1 equals angle 5. We have said angle 3 equals angle 7. And finally we've said that angle 4 is equal to angle 8. And the reason for all of these would be that there are corresponding angles corresponding angles. You don't write because they make an F. You're going to say they are corresponding angles and then you have to tell me which lines are parallel because sometimes in a drawing there are more than two lines or that are parallel. So I would say therefore that A is parallel to B. Okay, happy with that. Now let's bring you into the U for the fun. The U for the fun. So I'm going to erase these colors because I'm going to draw all over this again. So what the rule is for the u equals fun is that if you have two parallel lines, okay, it forms a kind of a u shape. And the rule for the u is that this plus that angle there adds up to 180 degrees. So they are supplementary angles and these angles are called co-interior angles and co-interior angles always add up to 180 degrees. So if we had to look at this drawing again we're looking for those very square or funny shaped U's. So if we look over here we can see that we've got, I've just lost my pen, there it is, okay there we go. That is one U-shape, where this line is parallel to this. Remember again, it has to be parallel lines. So what are we saying? We're saying 4 plus 5 have to add up to 180 degrees. So we would say angle 4 plus angle 5 add up to 180 degrees. Why? Because they are co-interior 
angles and we'd say why because ang line A is parallel with line B. Let's see if we can find another U. So let's choose another color. Let's choose red. So if you look carefully, you can see that that there also makes a funny U shape. Okay, so that means that 3 plus 6 have to add up to 180 degrees. So angle 3 plus angle 6 have to add up to 100 degree, 180 degrees. They are supplementary. We say they are supplementary because they add up to 180 degrees. Supplementary. Okay, and again, what would be the reason they're co interior angles? Because A is parallel to B. So that's your F. We've done F, we've done U for maths is fun. Let's look at our N. So again, I'm just going to erase all the bits on here so that I can draw over it again. Okay, and we're going to choose another color, ink color. Oh, I don't know. Choose a funny orangey color. Okay, so let's look at the N. The N. The reason my teacher used to teach me Z for maths is fuzz is because sometimes the N looks like an N, but a lot of times, like in this drawing, the N can be on its side, in which case it looks like a Z. So my teacher wasn't totally mad, she was looking for Zs, but it's basically the same type of shape. This line has to be parallel with this line, and when that is the case, this angle here is equal to that angle, or in this drawing, this line would be parallel to this and then this angle here would be equal to this angle and we call these angles alternate angles. Kids, it's not alternative. That's a type of music or a different direction. This is alternate angles, alternate angles, okay, and they are equal. So let's have a look. Let's see if we can find a Z. So do you see this is the most obvious Z, oh terrible drawing, where 3 is going to equal angle 5. So we would say therefore that we've got angle, where is my pen gone? I cannot see it. You see you guys get a nice little yellow dot whereas I just get this tiny little spot where I'm writing. So angle 3 equals angle 5. The reason would be that there are alternate angles alternate angles, not alternative, alternate angles and why again we need to say that A is parallel to B. Let's see if we can, see if we can find some other Z's. Let's change a color and do you see that we can have a backward Z? There's a backward Z. Okay, actually looks a bit like a square S and if that's the case between two parallel lines, if you've got a Z, that means that this angle here is equal to this angle here. So again, we can say that angle 4 is equal to angle 6 and we've got alternate angles A equals B. I mean, A is parallel to B. So you can see now where we get this maths is equal to fun. We've got the F, the U and the N or the Z. Right. Let's look at an example. They want us to find all the angles in this question and we know that we've got two parallel lines. Okay, so if we look at this, remember you'd never have to organize, I mean do all the answers in the left alphabetical order they give you. If they're trying to help you by giving you an alphabetical order, they're trying to give you some hints, but if you see something immediately then you can just solve for it. So for example if you work C, oh look I can see how to solve C, then write that down first. It's not going to be a problem. But let's do this one alphabetically because they've asked us to. So we've got that this is 55 degrees, we've got two lines that are parallel and then we're trying to find A. Now if we look at this we can see that if this is 55 degrees we've got that beautiful little backward N or a Z and therefore we can see that because this is parallel these angles are alternate and therefore this is 55 degrees. Okay that's not too bad. Hey let's look at B. B we've got that, let me just change the color of the pen if I can find my there it is. Let's change the color of the pen. So for B, do you see that we've got again 
two parallel lines, right, and they form that U. And remember that the U stands for co-interior angles. It stands for co-interior angles. And we know that therefore they are supplementary. So in other words, 123 degrees plus B has to equal 180 degrees, which means that B degrees is going to be 180 minus 123 degrees. And you can just pop that into your calculator and you can get that that is 57 degrees. So B is 57 degrees. And why? Because it's co-interior and therefore it is supplementary. So that's 57 degrees. Now let's look for C and I'm going to change the color again to green. So if we look for C, there are two ways we can get to C. The one way you can get to C is realize that this is on a straight line and therefore these two angles would be supplementary. So we do exactly the same thing as we did here. We'd go 180 minus 123 and get 57 degrees. There is another way that we could get that and that is by realizing that these two angles here are alternate. So this angle is actually equal to this angle and again we end up with 57 degrees. Now finally D. Okay and again I'm going to just change my colors and let's have a look at D. D there are two ways we can get D as well. We can either realize that this is a straight line, therefore 55 plus B plus D has to equal 180 degrees, okay, because a straight line adds up to 180 degrees because they are supplementary. Or we could realize that the three angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees and therefore this plus this plus this gives us 180 degrees. But we haven't actually covered that. We've only done lines and angles. So let's use the first method. We know that angle B plus angle D plus 55 degrees equals 180 degrees. Why? Because they're on a straight line. So therefore they are supplementary. But angle B is 57 degrees. So we've got 57 degrees plus D degrees plus 55 degrees is equal to 180. Therefore D is going to be 180 minus 57 minus 55 and then you can just pop that in your calculator. You go 55 plus 57 and you subtract that from 180 and you get 68 degrees and that would be supplementary because they are on a straight line. Right, let's look at another example. Okay, so this looks a little bit scary, but it really doesn't have to be scary. First things first, let's identify our straight lines. Do you see that, I mean our parallel lines, do you see that that there and that there is beautiful parallel lines? Okay, so the first thing I do is whatever pops out, that's what I do first. So I can immediately see, for me anyway, I'm looking at that 60 degrees. So I'm looking at the 60 degrees and I'm seeing that this here forms a Z or an N. Forms that. So therefore there are alternate angles and therefore this angle here also has to be 60 degrees. Okay. Then the next thing I'm going to see is, oh look, okay, let me see, where's this pen again? Why am I struggling with this too much today? Okay, there's the pen, red. This year is 90 degrees. That means that the whole of this, the whole of BCG, also has to be 90 degrees. Why? Because if this is 90, then, and this is a straight line, they have to add up to 180, so therefore this is 90. So therefore, X plus S has to add up to 90 degrees. They're complementary. So since X is 60 degrees, okay, equals 90 degrees, do you agree that we can say that S is 30 degrees? Awesome. So now we have S is 30 degrees. Okay, now let's start playing with these angles over here. Okay, and again, I'm just going to change color. 
to something. Okay, so the next number we have is 160 degrees. So therefore, I'm going to start saying, is there any the way that I can relate this number of 160 to anything over here? And if I look carefully, because this is a parallel line, and that's a parallel line, do you see that I have a beautiful F shape here? I have a beautiful F shape. So this is also 160 degrees. Why? Because they are corresponding. Now, if we look carefully again, we can look for Y, and we can see, oh look, but Y and R are on the same straight line. Therefore, they are supplementary. They have to add up to 180. Therefore, Y is going to be 180 degrees minus 160 degrees, which equals 20 degrees. So that means that Y here is 20 degrees. Now, I admit there's another way we could have got Y. You might have seen it first instead of the R. You might have seen that, oh, look, this forms a U. Okay, this here forms a U. And therefore, we've got co-interior angles and those to add up. But either way, you're going to get that this is 20 degrees. Finally, let's look at P. Now, the easiest way is to realize, therefore, that Y is vertically opposite to P, and this is 20 degrees. But if you didn't see that, there is another way that we can get it. Um, 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 what haven't I used? Okay, let's use this. You can see that this here is a straight line. That's a straight line. So this is 160 degrees. So this angle P has to be supplementary to angle R. And if this is 160, that gets to be 20. So do you see that there are multiple ways that you guys can get to the answers? So there isn't there's often more than one way, so don't be freaked out if your way and the memo way, the way that they explain, is different. As long as you're getting the same numbers and you've got good reasons, you are doing it correctly. Please, grade 10s, the best way for you guys to get really good at this section is to practice, 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 as with most maths. And then go do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a lovely day.